welcome to the bloody mess overview of non-humanoid characters um this tutorial is gonna be a little bit different because i'm not going to necessarily go step by step on how to actually set up one of these characters because in essence they are identical to setting up any other character with bloody mess there is little to no difference between these characters other than complexity and the inability of using the game object, object 3D object ragdoll script that comes with Unity. Let's look at this horse first so I can kind of explain. I'm also gonna, this video is also gonna kind of go over why you want to have really good bone names and and structures and when why when you're rigging a character you really need to pay attention to you know the flow of things when you're wanting to ragdoll or when you're wanting to use bloody mess or any system that's going to have ragdolls with characters whether they're humanoid or not like this horse for example is actually set up just like a human it has a root, it has a hips, and then it has its legs, and it has <laughs> left leg, upper leg, left foot, and it just keeps going down. That's just, they use an identical setup that you would use on a human. So if, for instance, you wanted to create a ragdoll for this character, and you wanted to start getting it set up for Bloody Mess, you obviously can't use uh, this, because it's this ragdoll um editor that comes with unity is only for uh humanoid bipeds and generally you need them to be in the t-pose this is a quadruped and it is obviously not in the t-pose uh so we're going to go in and what you do is you you have to figure out on your mesh or on your on your skeletal hierarchy where you want your 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 colliders to go so like, for instance, if we're going to add this left upper leg, which its bone is up here, and the hind section is where it starts, let's go ahead and add a uh, capsule collider to that, and just see sort of where it's, so we got to get its axis right, the direction it kind of goes. As you can see, it's its actual bone is up here. Now, if we do the same thing for the left leg, and go ahead and uh, bring its radius down, its height, you'll start noticing the problem. the actual rotations of these were done in a manner that's quite odd. I'm going to set all these up so you can see them end to end. When you create a capsule collider for a, a bone or a joint, technically this is where the joint starts. It follows where you have placed, it follows the direction of that bone. Like if I bring in the dude from the project files, if I drag him in here, if I go to one of his joints and like, hold on, let me make, go ahead and just focus on this right here. If I go to his left uh, forearm joint, that's the horse, that's not the dude, sorry. Let's go to spine, chest, uh, left shoulder, left arm, left forearm, let's go ahead and focus in on that. If I go to his left forearm joint and I manually rotate it, 
which this is definitely not something you want to do because it changes your the default position but this this shows you that that joint actually originates at or th this uh game joint is literally the joint where uh you can see that there's a uh skinning problem there but this joint actually rotates just like that if i was to go to the uh the hand for instance and do the same thing and maybe rotate it along its y axis you see how the the colliders actually are following where that bone actually is so if we now go back to our horse we click on our horse you can see that when this character was set up or this horse was set up that the bones are not they just aligned them straight down and then skinned them to the bones that are right here so if you were to add the left foot as a capsule collider you can see that it's kind of weird how they set up this actual rig uh, let's go to the the front uh go to the spine let's go to the uh the left forearm and let's add for each of these let's add a uh, capsule collider and then let's give them a smaller radius so you see how I'm this is just an example of how not to set up your character essentially you would want your bones to follow the actual geometry of your character. Let's go to the uh, spider here as another example of a difficult character to work with. The way he's... Uh, of course, it's in another language. But this character could actually... has an armature. But I don't know what these are. They're... obviously labeled for some reason, but... I turn them off, it doesn't do anything. And the mesh is all one mesh, so those aren't extra mesh pieces. But I can look in here and I can tell that this is a torso. So if you wanted to add a capsule collider to it, you could. And you can increase its radius and its height. Move it down the x-axis so it's on the correct axis for this model. And you could set up a little torso here for the character. If you follow the bones up, it's got this tail section right here. Now, it goes torso and then bone 03 and bone 04. Again, if if I was modeling and rigging these characters, these bones would be labeled as uh, torso 2 or tail section or whatever, just to give an indication to whoever is messing with it in the engine that you know what it is. So I'll go to Capsule Collider. I'll create a Capsule Collider for this. Sometimes you're going to have to mess with the actual position. Because if we're wanting this to ragdoll, you don't want there to be so much overlap. In fact, this actual torso could probably have its radius brought down and it could be moved up some. Maybe right there. And we can take this and move it along its x axis where it's about right there. Now, if we wanted this to actually ragdoll, when we press enter, if we wanted it to flop down or do whatever it's going to do, you got to do a couple things. First, you need to add a character joint. 
which automatically adds a rigid body. We'll give it a rigid body mass of this torso of like 30, give or so. And uh, give or take, not give or so, I don't know what I'm talking about. You would want to add a character joint here too. Actually, with a torso, since this is the middle of the body, I would actually not add the character joint. I would just leave the rigid body and then add the character joint to this bone 04 that we put the capsule collider on. Oh, and again, you can get this. This is a free spider from the asset store. So you can download it and, and uh, mess with it and kind of learn with it if you want to. And this character joint has to be connected to something. And in fact, it has to be connected to something with a rigid body. So you actually drag the torso there, and now that's connected. And remove the animator component from the top so that if I press play, actually, I want to know what happens if I press play. Probably something wacky. Oh, yeah, I need to add a collider to my actual uh, character. Well, no, actually, what I'm going to do is take a look at, uh, before I do the, anything with the play, I'm going to take a look at uh, all this right here. First, okay, well, maybe this will work a little bit better. Yeah, okay, see, I can't move the camera. Well, if I, I can if I'm in, uh, let's not maximize on play. Let's just watch it like this. Okay, see how it's doing its little ragdoll thing there? Like it's using gravity and doing... You've set up a ragdoll for this tail section right here. Or butt section or whatever you want to call that on a spider. Now when you look at it, the spider is split up into obviously multiple legs. And this right here is the beginning. He doesn't really label them. I guess this is the distill, or the end of it. Um, but he starts at this this L, and then he has a BL, and a CL, and a DL. Well, we don't necessarily need all of those, but were we to set something up here, we would need a character joint. Give it a give it whatever you think that portion of the body needs, a 5. And you need a, not a character controller, but a um, capsule collider. Now, this last joint has to take over for this entire section of the mesh. Because this is the last bone in the mesh. So what we want to do is make it rather large. get it on the right axis. This is on the x-axis. Let's move it along the x-axis so it sort of follows the geometry as best as you can make it. It would be nice if you could use mesh colliders on skin meshes, but we aren't there yet in video game technology. It just doesn't work. So we just do our best. So we have this, this little uh, guy here, which doesn't look super great, but it will work for all intensive purposes. I'm kind of moving it around. Now, you've got these two, and you could add capsule colliders and all that jazz to these two, but that's a lot of extra stuff. So what I'm going to do is add it just to this L. Add a capsule collider. Put it on the x-axis because that seems to be what he's using here. And then give it a height to where it kind of matches where the body and this top portion are. You may have to mess with the actual position some so it doesn't overlap. You don't want it to overlap a lot when it comes to, to ragdolls. Okay, so you have the torso here, you have this bone here. Now, we need to figure out if there is a head. So, maybe that's what Shea means? Head. Oh, there is a head right there. 
And then you can actually put bones on. In fact, I think I may do that. Zuba. Reveal. Not exactly sure what these bones are for. Because that looks like it would be perfect for that. So if we were to add capsule colliders to these two things. Bring them down. Put them on the x-axis. Let's give them a little bit more radius. And a little bit more height. And then let's actually move them on the x-axis. See how I've covered... Now, you wouldn't necessarily do this part right here for an actual ragdoll. But if you wanted to make these uh, be something you could shoot, like let's say you're, you've are you made your ragdoll and you, wanna, you want these positions right here to be like extras, you can set them to uh, extra 1 and extra 2 set those as their tags and since since they are uh they're just triggers they're they're literally they're going to follow where the bone is but this will be just like your special spot that you can hit your extra spot let's actually give it the head a uh a collider Move it around a bit. And then we need to look at the master. Let's see, those connect pretty well. That looks pretty good. This head collider is pretty good. These are set to trigger, so they're not going to do anything. So for the head, we would add a um, character joint. And a ragdoll, I'll give it a, maybe its weight is 10. And you wouldn't, you want to connect the head to the torso. So you would grab the torso, connect it to the head. You would grab this right here. Or this. You would grab this and you would connect it to the, the Naga CL, this, this inner leg. You give it its own rigid body. And the masses I'm putting in here just for the physics system to know like what to give priority to. If something weighs more, it's gonna fall faster essentially. Um we grab the torso and we connect it to this limb right here, and then we need to connect this outer appendage part to the inner one. So we go to its character joint and we drag that right there. Now, this is connected to the, the center. The head is connected to the center. These two triggers right here, we can kind of, they don't really serve a purpose for a ragdoll. I'll just turn them off. But if we press play now, let's see what happens. You can see our character ragdolls a little bit better, but it's lopsided because there's no weight on this side at all. Like, we haven't done that side yet. All the weight is on this side. So what you would do is you would keep going along on every one of these legs and every one of these joints and adding the, uh, the, the capsule colliders and adding the rigid bodies and the character joints and setting them up. And you should probably go an extra step and... Maybe look at your uh, your actual character joints and setting them up a little bit better with their. Uh, I would look into really learning how to set up a good rigid body and really learning how to use character joints and get them set up correctly to make the the mesh. Um, ragdoll the best it can to make it look the best. Um, I don't think. For for bipeds, for, for human characters, there's things like the ultimate ragdoll generator, I think it was Erg, and then there's uh, biped, which, you, which both can get you pretty good looking ragdolls. Now, let's say 
that you've got a ragdoll for this character. And oops, I didn't want to do that. You just want to have the triggers there for Bloody Mess to use. I keep deleting the colliders. I don't want to do that. You just basically, I'm just going through and removing all the uh, rigid bodies from what I created here and the character joints. And then you just go through and you can grab everything you've done. Just like just like the examples for this is identical to the examples for a <coughs> a humanoid character. It literally is just a different you'd literally just have to set it up manually instead of having the uh ragdoll script or editor window thing do it for you. That's the only difference in this entire process. That uh, the only difference between a non-human and humanoid character and a humanoid character, which is kind of the reason why I'm not going through a full tutorial on this. It's because I would be kind of repeating myself. Let's turn these back on. Okay, now. Obviously, when you're setting your tags, something I need, I need to talk about. These tags are ultimately just names. They don't... They're not important in uh, that something be called that. Like, I could call the head right forearm if I felt like it. The only thing is, that's going to tell the system that the right forearm is hit. But I could change this name. I could change right forearm. I could go into my editor and project settings and go to tags and layers and I go up to the tags and I could change right leg, left leg, I could change it to whatever I want them to be but if you do that you need to make sure to open up your uh, character setup script and everywhere you have changed like let's say let's say we we change right leg to something uh, right pincer or pincher or whatever you want to call it you just need to come in everywhere it where everywhere the script accesses right leg you need to change it to the correct tag or it won't it won't recognize it and the only place it does that is in this one giant switch statement so you really make one change and, and i don't believe i'd actually access that at all in the no you only make one change in character setup and you can set something to something else. So if we want right leg to be right pincer we can go up in here and we just need to make sure that we go to right leg and call it right pincer. And then we go to our actual thing right here which I consider a pincer and we set it to right pincer. That simple. It will... Now, of course, the script, like if I was to add the uh, character setup, uh, not character movement, you're obviously not going to... Uh, and this is why I, if I was setting this up, I wouldn't change any of the tags. It's because all of these right here are uh, set to be like right leg, right left leg. But again, even if even if we never changed that right leg, even if it stayed right leg, it doesn't matter. All it is is a tag telling the system what's been hit. What actually has been hit doesn't matter. It could be... Your right leg could be your head, your right leg could be one of these. You could use torso for all of these interior parts, and you could do like right leg, right forearm, right hand, right upper arm for these different pincers. And it would, and as long as you know which one where it is, and you can like maybe write it down and remember it's not, it's not going to matter. What I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say here is it may seem like these names are important, but they're not. The only importance is that they link into the system and you know what's being hit.
So in the case that I changed right pincer, I would have to know that this max right leg health is actually max right pincer health. I would need to know that my leg multiplayer is actually my pincer multiplier. But in the case of something like this, I would probably make sure that the legs and the arms are all the same multiplier anyways, because I'm probably going to use them both to get all eight of these. That makes sense. You can also use extra parts, like I mentioned earlier. I made these two things in the front, extra one and extra two. And that's why I created the extra, the four extra um, body parts, is so you could use them on, on creatures that have odd... Uh, odd uh, number of limbs or extra limbs or special spots like you could put this as an extra spot back here since it's kind of like a special spot and it doesn't really follow the torso or anything or a leg or anything like that it's that's why that's there now if I was doing this horse it, I would literally just name it legs in the back arms in the front neck head torso right here upper body and then lower body for the dinosaur we can look at his uh, setup he's set up kind of weird in that he has a uh, pretty much none of his bones are labeled on what they actually are which I would extremely disagree against this is not something you want to do because you hand this if you were in a, a, a production environment with a game and you hand this to somebody it's they're not going to be happy <laughs> this so because right now it's really I have to literally click through all these to figure out where where I'm where I am on the body and like this bone 18 is the upper wrist and then we have the hand and then we have the fingers so yeah not that I'm hating on anybody's work I'm just saying that if you're wanting to be thorough I would uh, argue against I would give unique names sort of like the horse was done and that you've got your left leg and left foot. Of course, I would not just copy a biped's names. It would be left hoof or, you know, lower left leg or tail or whatever. It's just good practice when you're, uh, when you're rigging things. Now, as far as dismemberment, again, anything can be dismembered that is a skinned mesh or has is a actually let me say this a better way anything in very soon anything that is attached to a skeleton can be dismembered right now it's only skin meshes but when i make it i'm about to make a change to allow for some of the more simple characters like sinti simple people or simple zombies can also be dismembered they are not skinned they're just parented to bones so Anything that is either skinned or parented to bones will be able to be dismembered. It doesn't matter if it's a three-toed sloth, a blob, or a spider or a human. It can all be dismembered. It's all about how you set it up, where you make your your cuts for your dismemberment. So, if I was to cut up this this spider character right here, for instance. I would likely make my cuts here and maybe right here or I would just make a cut right there and have this whole part fall off and this still be attached to the torso. I mean you can get in here close if you want to but it starts to get really difficult because these um, vertexes in here can, can inherit weights from the body. Because right here, these the, the weights from this body are going to creep up this arm so that it looks natural. And you really don't want to have to... Uh, it's just nicer the farther you weigh, you get away from big portions of the body. 
if you've watched the tutorial on setting up a character that's been for dismemberment, you will notice that because of the way it was weighted, I had to include the torso as a uh, part of this this body part because it had to follow with it to get the uh, to keep the skin from stretching unnaturally. So that is uh, something you need to keep in mind. But um, other than that, there's not really much more I would want to talk about um, non-humanoid characters other than basically saying that you can follow the setup tutorials for the humanoid characters I have and just instead of creating the uh, the ragdoll this way where you drag things in you just go in and you you add the character joints because all this does all this does is add default character joint capsule collider and um, a rigid body to the bones and you can do that manually it's it's like just like I did here you can go in and you can add your You can just come in and add a character joint and it adds a rigid body for you and then you just have to drag the rigid body that you want attached to that to the character joint and you just do that for each leg in your character and then you have a character that ragdolls no matter what type of character it is so um, if you have questions about this feel free to ask in the uh, forum thread that you can find on the uh, the Bloody Mess page in the Unity Asset Store. It's um, probably one of the fastest way to get get in touch with me. I mean, I, I obviously answer emails too, but you can also get help from other people that happen to be around. So uh, yeah, just let me know if you have any questions on uh, anything, not you know, not just non-humanoid characters, but. Anyways, that is uh, pretty much what I wanted to say about non-humanoid characters. Um, in the future, I think we may include one in Bloody Mess as a demo, <clears throat> but we'd obviously have to make, make our own character, and right now we're kind of focused on getting the zombie out to y'all so you can have access to him. He's going to be pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, anyways, I'll see you in the next tutorial.